Hello everyone, Zeph Films here. Welcome to episode one of my playthrough uh, Star Trek Online. I am playing as a liberated Borg character. Uh, I should state that the liberated Borg is only available if you have a lifetime subscription. Uh, I've always wanted to play as a liberated Borg and uh, I, got, I got lifetime a few months ago. So I am fulfilling my... <laughs> something I've always wanted to do in STO. Uh, you don't really get anything extra special be for being a liberated Borg. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you're new to the game and you're looking for, uh, I, I want to play as a liberated Borg, you unfortunately have to purchase the lifetime uh, membership. Um, why am I not pl creating a separate account and doing a free-to-play playthrough? I don't know. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um... I don't have an answer for you on that one. I just, I don't know. I just, I do everything, like all my video stuff through one account. And I just, I, I just don't want the added hassle of, uh, of switching accounts. Um, and the purpose of this video is to show you, like, I know in the past I've shown you, this is how, this is what you get when you do this. And I haven't, I want to show the how to get there. So I want to be able to kind of be able to swip, swap back and forth between established characters if I need to uh, easily so uh, yeah uh, before we take off on our first mission first thing you want to make sure you have done with your ship is you have your weapon set to auto fire so if you see down here in the weapons tray I have the uh, these things that are these are the weapons so that's phaser torpedo I think that's a turret and that's a uh, another phaser array uh, so to turn on uh, auto fire is just right click each one make sure that they are uh, green or highlighted green that means auto fire is on uh, if you want to adjust things on your on your screen just press f12 and you can uh, you can move things around at your leisure um, so if you wanted to move your tray you can your bridge officers you want to move them somewhere else you can uh, I've never really played with it so much. I've just kind of left it as is. So, uh, so this is the way I like to do it. Um, actually, we probably stand to move these up a little bit. There we go. And the other thing is powers. So I usually like to set my uh, divert the majority of my power to uh, to weapons, just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, if you want some more survivability, then you put it to defense. Uh, if you want more speed, then you can put it to speed. And if you want balance, so everything even, you can press the balance button. Or you can do press this button and then go to three. And you'll, you can, um, you can uh, manage them all yourself. So there's little lock buttons. So say I want to keep my weapon power there. Uh, but I wanted a little bit more speed. I could, I could leave that there. Let's say I want a little bit more speed. I could increase my speed and it'll automatically take it from something else. Um, so, uh, but yeah, let's, let's do our first mission. So we're in the Klingon War arc, and we're going to be doing diplomatic orders. We have a diplomatic mission for you. An important Vulcan ambassador is traveling from his homeworld to the monastery at Pajem. Capturing the ambassador would be a major coup for the Klingons or Orions. So we're assigning you to make sure everything goes smoothly. You are to escort Ambassador Soketh to Pajem. Please meet him at Vulcan. Once you locate him, speak with him about the transport mission. Do whatever is necessary to keep him safe. Alrighty, so yeah, this is our very first mission. Uh, we're going to get some XP, some expertise, uh, a data recorder, a uh, new photon torpedo, which isn't better than the one I have now, it looks like. No, definitely not. Uh, personal shield and some dilithium. So let's accept that. And we could travel via sector space, um, or we can just hit the transwarp button, which is what I'm going to do. My friend sacrificed so much space. to secure peace Your with the Klingons. I bear sisters. the responsibility for the consequences to him and his crew, a thought that troubles me to this day. The hope was that this alliance would last forever. It did not. The Klingons have chosen war. The Federation is doing its utmost to protect its borders and the billions of innocents who call this space home. But I fear that this conflict may be our undoing. So that's that's the other cool thing, where you go to a section of space that you've never been to, 
uh, you get Sp- uh, Spock um, voiceover uh, talking about stuff. Uh, I'm going to keep these little pop-ups uh, just to remind me of stuff because it's been such a long time since uh, um, since I've started something from the beginning. So some of the basic stuff I might have actually forgotten. So uh, here it's saying press M key to open up the map. So we're, there we go. Click to continue. The location circled in yellow is your current destination. So we are already there. Uh, you can click on the circled icon to auto navigate to the system. So I guess that's something I could have showed. Um, but yeah, so if like say we're up here at Soul System, uh, we can just click on Vulcan, and this window will pop up saying plot a course, and then you can say okay and take your hands off the mouse and keyboard and go make a coffee while you travel. Uh, because we're at the beginning of the game. Our warp speed is pretty slow. <laughs> I think we can hit top speed of warp 5.56. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's definitely slow travel. Uh, I would suggest maybe using transwarp if, uh, if you're in a rush. Uh, in the future, you may also see white circles on the map. These are destinations for other missions you may currently have. If you alter course manually, auto navigation will automatically disengage. This is true. So uh, if you hit auto navigate and then you hit a button and walk away, your ship will just keep on going until it hits an edge. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do our mission. Captain, we've arrived at, arrived at the Vulcan system. I took the liberty of contacting the ambassador's aide when we arrived. Pella says the ambassador has uh, certain arrangements that he prefers when traveling. She would like you to go. She would like to go over them with you. Would you like me to put her on the main view screen? Yes. Greetings. Thank you for agreeing to escort the ambassador to Pajem. Ambassador Soketh is currently attending a ritual to honor the end of the Call Wreck holiday. He will be done soon, but the ambassador is hesitant to use transporter technology. His bias against the transporters is not logical, but I have come to accept it. I believe that Soketh would be much more comfortable traveling by shuttlecraft. I have received clearance for you to land near the Ambassador's location. I look forward to meeting you in person. All right, so let's board a shuttle and go down there. We are ready to land on Vulcan. When you are ready, make our final report, uh, re approach, <laughs> let me know. Oh boy. All right, so yeah, here's the inside of the shuttle. <laughs> so let's just go here and land. Starfleet shuttlecraft. This is Vulcan orbital control. You are cleared to land at the requested coordinates. Welcome to Vulcan. Please enjoy your stay. So from what I remember, that voiceover has actually changed, and I believe that cutscene has changed as well. Uh, the ambassador and his aide are waiting for you at the temple at the top of this rise. You can speak to them there and find out if the ambassador needs anything else from us before we depart Pajem. All right. Another thing you want to make sure you do before um, going on any missions, uh, go to stations, standard away team and pick out what you want or who you want to take um, when you start the game it'll default to security so it'll look like that um, so just a uh, just a heads up for you just a uh, a um, a tip if you may or if i may i don't know man it's been forever since i've played this mission uh, Ambassador Aid Tapella has required you meet with her before speaking to the ambassador. I think we can do that. I don't think I need a weapon. By the way, H, the letter H, is uh, will holster your weapon. So if you don't like running around with a weapon in your hand, you can press H and it'll hide it. So just another. Also, if you want to get it out of. Uh, this view where you turn your mouse and wherever you move your mouse you're looking press the letter B and that'll free you up and then you can move the camera however you want but 
I always play with B activated. Uh, where's the 8? Right here. Welcome to Vulcan. I regret to inform you that we have come to an impasse in completing your mission. Allow me to explain. As you know, Pajem is, a sac is sacred to the Vulcan people, and access to it is strictly prohibited. Ordinarily, this would not present any difficulty, but Savin, the leader of the order that maintains the monastery, has chosen this moment to illogically refuse has chosen this moment to illogically refuse to grant Ambassador Soketh permission to meet with the abbot at Pajem. This is most abnormal. Can the trip wait until Savin changes his mind? The ambassador has considered going to the council to request that they overrule Savin, but this process will take time that he simply does not have. If the ambassador is unable to complete his journey to Pajem now, we will have to delay it until the trade conference at Korodan is complete. And that could take weeks. I wonder why Savin won't grant the ambassador permission. The ambassador, I'm afraid, has spent too much time off-world. I've seen it change him. His interactions with other species have grown earlier, easier over the years, but our own people have become more challenging for him to deal with. Perhaps you could speak to Savin. I know he has a great deal of respect for Starfleet, and you might have an easier time than he has in convincing him to grant the ambassador's request. Alright, so we gotta go question Savin about why he won't allow Soketh to visit Pajem. Let's do that now. Probably not with a rifle in my hand. Oh, as I drop my phone. Alright, so here's the High Priest. Peace and long life. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Yeah, Soketh says you won't permit him to visit Pajem. Soketh accuses me of abandoning logic, but he is the one refusing to explain his reasons for wanting to go to Pajem. The planet is sacred. Our ancestors walked those paths. They found understanding and serenity in its quiet. When I am at Pajem, I feel more at peace than any place else in the galaxy. Pajem has been touched by outside influences in the past. The Federation is at war. Now more than any other time, we must protect this refuge. Do you seek knowledge of the ancestors? Uh, I'm not going to go through all the text. Uh, is there any way I could persuade you to allow Soket to visit Pajem? I will permit it if you will pledge to me, on your honor as a Starfleet officer, that you will protect Pajem from harm. Soketh says his reasons for wanting to speak to the abbot are private. I will accept that, but only if you are with him. I know I can trust Starfleet. Please, protect Pajem from any who would violate its sanctity. All right, cool. So we have permission. <laughs> Welcome to Vulcan. Do you have any questions? Uh, I've spoken to Savin. We can leave for Pajem now. Excellent. Our departure has been delayed long enough by the whims of one man. I am prepared for the journey and can leave immediately. Let's -a go. All right. Lead on. Okay. So now we just run back down the mountain to the shuttle. Because somebody doesn't like to use transporter technology. Sigh. Alright, let's board the shuttle. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, we have logged your flight trajectory, and you are cleared for departure. Live long and prosper. Alright, let's return to the bridge. All right, Ambassador Soketh has retired to his quarters. Uh, we can leave the system whenever you like. Let's go do that now. Your inventory has a replicator that will allow you to buy and 
sell items. Press I to open your inventory. Okay, I. Click on replicator to access your store. You can purchase common items from the replicator. You can sell items by using recycle and retrieve sold items with retrieve. Yeah, so later on, uh, when we start doing Borg missions, uh, you'll need a frequency remodulator, so you would get that from the replicator. And then these are things that you might need for, uh, for like, mission stuff later on. Uh, but... And hypos. If you're on a hypos, you can come here and get them. Uh, but let's get rid of that. Let's open our map, and we need to go to Pajem. So let's click Pajem. Click OK. Hands off the wheel. I think you're able to move the mouse around, at the very least. If it doesn't stop us, we'll find out. Yeah, it stops. Alright, let's continue. I'm picking up an unusual energy reading in the system. We should scan the system before we take the ambassador to the surface. Alright. Scan energy. Klingon ships to cloaking, sir. Meh. Alrighty. This is Captain Katak to all Klingon vessels. Target their warp drive. There will be no escaping our vengeance this time. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target shield has failed. We're being hailed. Cease your fire, Captain. Perhaps today is a day for words. My fellow captains were blinded by our vengeance toward the shapeshifter aboard your vessel. They have died with honor. But if I am to die this day, then I would prefer to regale the halls of Stovokor with the tale of that foul creature's death. Shapeshifter? Ha! So even the mighty Federation has been fooled by the beast. Your guest from Vulcan is not as he or she seems, Captain. They are an Undine. They put on a false face and try to control us. But we Klingons know better. We will hunt them down until the last of these honorless dogs die screaming. An Undine? Have you any proof? Proof? Allow me to stick a blade in its belly while I look it in the eye while it dies. That should be proof enough, even for Starfleet. Yeah, we'll totally take that into consideration. Thank you for voicing your concern. If you wish the honor of the kill yourself, then it is yours to have. So long as the Undine dies, I will meet my death with eyes wide open and victory in my heart. I await your decision. Close hailing frequencies. All right. Uh, sensor scans indicate the Klingon vessel's warp drive shields and weapon systems are all offline. I don't even think they have impulse power. Whatever you decide to do, they can't really do much about it. So let's discuss the Undyne with the science. The Undyne are a species that were first encountered by the crew of the USS Voyager. They catalog cataloged them as species 8472. Did they catalog them or did the Borg catalog, catalog them as that? Uh, as the Klingon commander indicated, they are indeed capable of changing shape. Additionally, they possess telepathic abilities that aid them in infiltrating the cultures of other species. So Ambassador Soketh could be one. I'm afraid that that is a conclusion that we cannot rule out, Captain. I could conduct a test to determine if the ambassador is who he claims to be. Unfortunately, that would violate his ambassador ambassadorial immunity. Uh, let's talk to tactical officer. The Undyne are physically superior to humans and consider anyone from our dimension to be an inferior life form. Their vessels are more than a match for the Borg. They represent a great threat to Starfleet. Uh, where's the ambassador now? 
Uh, the ambassador is still in his quarters. Sir, I recommend setting a security detail to detain the ambassador until we are certain of his identity. Sound precaution. Uh, and let's talk to engineering. The Undyne come from a dimension known as fluidic space. They use quantum singularities to move into ours. I'm afraid much of their technology still remains a mystery to us, but one thing is certain, it's not to be underestimated. So why use a Starfleet vessel? That I cannot say, but as the Undyne are virtually unknown in the Beta Quadrant, my guess is that they are aiming to conceal their presence here. And the Klingons? What the Klingons are saying could be true, Captain. If the Undyne are in the Beta Quadrant, it might just be that the Klingons sniff them out before us. In this case, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Alright, call the ambassador to the bridge and open a channel to the Klingon vessel. Let's settle this. I don't remember this. <laughs> I could have swore we just beamed down and... My patience is growing thin, Captain. If you lack the stomach to slay the beast aboard your vessel, then any Klingon here would gladly do it for you. I'd hate for you to stain that pretty Starfleet uniform with Undine blood. Very generous, but unnecessary. Then the beast is slain? Maka! Very good. Perhaps you've the heart of a warrior after all. Let me look upon our enemy, and tonight we will dine together as warriors and drink to the honored dead. Uh, I present Ambassador Soketh. Captain, I take my meditations very seriously. Why have I been summoned to the bridge? Accused? Meet your accuser. Alive? You're a fool, Captain! Strike now before it's too late! Not without proof. You want proof? Then lower your shields and allow me to beam over. Once the Undine's blood coats my blade, you'll see it for what it truly is. A grint hound in Tark's clothing! Ambassador, allow me to explain. There's no need, Captain. The situation is not difficult to unravel. My concern lies in the logic of you entertaining this Klingon's meritless claim. Meritless, but not unreasonable. A most illogical conclusion. Allow us to examine the facts, Captain. You have a crippled Klingon vessel, whose captain has made unsubstantiated claims that I am an Undine, a species that is known to both the Federation and the Klingon Empire as a considerable threat. Mm-hmm. Potentially. But only if a great many other factors were to be true. Is it not much more likely that the Klingons have, in the face of defeat, instead sought to exploit Starfleet's desire for peaceful resolutions to conflict in order to repair their vessel and renew their assault? Well, what's the status of the Klingon vessel? Weapons inoperable, warp drive still offline, wait. I'm detecting an energy surge. They're engaging their cloaking device. A true warrior strikes without mercy, Captain. I only hope to teach you this lesson personally before the Undine does. We may not be able to best your vessel, but a Klingon knows many roads to victory. The beast may have evaded my vengeance for now, but I can still ruin its plans here at Pajem. Fire weapons. I've lost them. They're gone. Scan the area. Captain, I'm detecting energy signatures on Pajem service. They're in the vicinity of the monastery. They appear to be transporter signals. Life signals indicate they are Klingon. I'm taking an away team down. Captain, shall I accompany you? No, it's too dangerous. A wise precaution. Though I admit I am eager to see my people safe, I will await word until the monastery is secured. And Captain, let not my journey here be for naught. All right, away team to transporter room one. I'm detecting energy signatures on the service. Oh, we already... A wise precaution. Did all that already. Weird. <laughs> all right, let's beam down. Uh, another thing here, this window, if you're new to the game, this is uh, a note for you. Uh, you can... Th these, these people here, these bridge officers, is what showed up. Um, from what you've set here. 
if for some reason you want to do a last minute change, you're more than welcome to uh, by just clicking the drop down. Uh, but let's click accept. Captain, we need to secure the area and then make our way towards the monastery, which is located at the top of the hill. I'm reading multiple Klingon patrols between us and the main building. Recommend we proceed with caution. All right. Let's do this. So let's press H. If you have two weapons, Z uh, switches between them rather quickly. So if we see here. So uh, if you hit enemies from the back or the sides, you get flanking bonus to your damage. Try attacking from different directions than your friends or away team. And now my dogs do the bork bork. Oh, here we go. There we go. And same thing as in sector space, you press M, you can get the map. You can see where your object your objective is. Unfortunately, there is no uh, autopilot on the ground. <laughs> When an enemy is exposed, you have an exploit attack. When an enemy is exposed and you have an exploit attack, the icon will change to alert you. And if and if executed, you will do bonus damage. Good to know. So far this map seems pretty towards us, hit the mines. There we go. Yeah, this map is exactly how I remember it. <laughs> oh, there's a thing over here. Oh, 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 there we go. Sir, we've received an alert from Vulcan. Tapala says she must speak to you immediately. I'll patch her through. I have terrible news. Vulcan security forces have discovered the body of Ambassador Soketh. They have determined that he was killed by a phaser blast at short range. His remains were discovered in a stasis chamber hidden in a cavern beneath the ambassador's residence. The ambassador on your ship, the one that I have been working for, is an imposter. <sighs> you need to be very careful. This imposter was able to fool Sokes' closest associates for months. He is crafty and very patient. Now that he has been discovered, he will be dangerous. Captain, security teams have reached Ambassador Sokath's quarters, but he's gone. They're searching the ship, but, sir, unauthorized use of the transporters detected. The Vulcan government is requesting that the Imposter Sokath be detained and returned to Vulcan for questioning. Sir, whoever used the transporter erased the logs, but I have a feeling that the Imposter is on the planet's surface. I recommend we locate him immediately, or we'll find him. Such emotion on your face. I see now my deception has been exposed. Pity. Capturing the abbot so we could replace him as well would have been beneficial. But we are strong. We will prevail. You are weak, and the weak shall perish. I am Borg. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, missions at times. Pause to give you a chance to rest or heal. You have you have a waiting comm message from your ship in your comm action bar. When you're ready, continue to answer the incoming message. Okay. Recommend we return to the... Oh, I gotta change the name of that ship. <laughs> and search for the Undyne ship. We need to find the Undyne and take it back from Starfleet. Alright. Or take it back to Starfleet. I don't know. There's an Undyne ship on uh, intercept course. Uh, sir, we don't have the armaments to handle an Undyne attack. Starfleet reports that it is sending ships to assist, but they are about 60 seconds out. We have to hold out until the reinforcements get here. Captain, if we target their torpedoes, we might have a chance. All right. Uh, press tab to switch targets to the incoming torpedoes to destroy them with your ship's weapons. All right. Oh, there's one. Alright, so they recommend transferring all power to shields, so let's do that. Oh, there we go. For some reason can't target them all, but... I guess we'll try and keep our distance here. Couldn't target that one either. Oh, we can target that one. There we go. Nope. Can't target that one either. Jeez. Oh, there's the cavalry. I think it was this mission. I remember when I first did it, uh, I could not beat this ship. <laughs> Increase our weapons here a bit. Scan for or scan the debris. Downloading data now. Incoming message. Incoming message from the USS Challenger. This is Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger. Glad to see we made it here in time to lend you a hand. Perhaps you'll return the favor something. Forge out. Nice. We have recovered the final data transmission from the Undyne vessel, as well as samples of the organic material that was used to create the ship. Uh, we need to get all this back to Starfleet Intelligence. They may ha be able to decrypt the message and tell us more. Alright, so let's depart the system. Alright, then we go up here and click this little button. The ambassador was an Undine? I'm afraid their infiltration of the Federation goes much deeper than we realized. Who knows what kind of havoc they could create. All right, so we got our experience and we get all these goodies. Let's continue. Congratulations, Lieutenant. We leveled up to Lieutenant level four and we got some stuffs. Uh, nothing crazy. I received a report. There is a Bolian. Nothing crazy as of yet. Uh, we haven't really unlocked all the uh, other cool stuff like duty officers and uh, um, Admiralty and all that, but um, yeah, 
that's uh, that's the end of episode one. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you were entertained. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, if, like if you're newer to the game and you have a question, something you want me to address, leave a comment down below. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I can't remember if I asked for those. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next uh, video. Bye-bye.